It's Tabletop Time. I'm Dave. I'm Murray. And we have been loving the new Cadian models. So we both got the Cadia Stands box, and today we're going to customize some awesome field guns. Because neither of us collect Cadia. So we want to do some conversions and create our own existing armies, sort of tie into those. So I'm going to be launching into making more Traitor Guard. And I'm going to be adding to my Steel Legion from Armageddon Army. <gasps> Let's do it. Yes. Bam. So it was time to dive into our boxes and start building some artillery. Now, Murray, you had originally got this box for a different project, right? Yes, I had grand plans or have grand plans to actually use all the infantry for uh, 30k. I was going to make some solar auxilia infantry and see where that leads me, but I'm not going to use artillery, so this is actually perfect. So this was one of my first experiences with a super new Games Workshop kit. Same, really, and these sprues are just more and more packed every, every single time. It's nice to see that uh, at least some passing understanding of engineering seems to have gone into this artillery. Whether or not it fits any real world analogs doesn't matter. It looks like it would work, which is almost a first for games. Workshop. But uh, overall, I did find it went together pretty well, with the exception of the gun barrel. So with the base of the guns assembled, this is about as far as we can go before our journeys diverge, Murray. Yeah, yeah. I'm more or less going to keep following the instructions and then there'll be some additions later, but you're going to hard cut about here. Yes, it's time for me to tell you a little bit more about the Traitor Guard. So one of the things I adore about Imperial Guard armies and Traitor Guard armies is artillery, which is why the field guns in particular drew me in. I'd previously built a bunch of artillery for my Traitor Guard and I was really excited to get to make this one. Something that I want to do a little bit different about my Traitor Guard is I'm trying to make them feel like a militia or a planetary defense force that has actually fully turned away from the Imperium. These aren't ragtag cultists that you'd find in the Chaos Space Marines list. These are actually fully trained and equipped militaries from entire sectors that have fallen to chaos, perhaps in the Imperium Nihilus. However, because of their slightly degenerating leadership structure and their need to conscript every last person, I do like to make Make sure there's a little bit more of a rough and ready appearance to my traders. Some of them are in the PDF uniform, some of them are in high-tech guard regiment uniforms, but others of them are using more scrapped together armor from perhaps personal militias, police forces, or whatever. And I guess one similarity between mine and Mari's forces is the gas masks. Almost all of my traders have gas masks or cloths over their face, because I like to imagine this world is a horrible ash waste that they're fighting over. Unfortunately, a lot of my old models are no longer usable even in the guard codec, with heavy mortars and earthshaker batteries being forged world compendium units that haven't gotten pretty much any love in literally years. I'm looking forward to making some field guns to satisfy my craving for heavy artillery. All right, so I'm working on my renegade guns and I have a secret weapon, an ancient relic in fact, and something that I miss from the bygone days of Forge World. That's right, I have the last pieces of my renegades and heretics etched brass and this is uh, marked 2007 so I guess that makes it 16 years old although that's terrifying to say they don't make this stuff anymore they certainly don't do etched brass but it has a really special place in the worlds of conversions so I'm gonna use some of that on my gun all right so when looking to make my traitor guns the first thing I had to look at was my collection of bits now for my previous guard on the channel I'd predominantly swapped the plastic bits from the blooded kill team box with the new Katie and kits. However, there's a lot of different elements here that make me not want to lean in that direction. And first and foremost is all of the blooded torsos have a little bit of a jacket that goes down below the waist. And for this sitting model, I think that's going to be a bit of a pain to try and just kit bash together. So my choice here was to use some of the classic Forge World Renegades and Heretics torsos. Now for this gunner, it was really important to me that I keep the legs and I also keep the arms because they're designed to attach on these little wheels that raise the elevation of the gun. So really for this guy, it was just a torso and head swap, which is one convenient piece. But I also wanted to hide one of the larger seams on the shoulder. So I used this uh, cool trader shoulder pad as well on the minis. All 
Alright, so the front of my gun is going to be more or less pristine, exactly as out of the box. However, you're going to do a bit of chaos of firing. Yeah, I need some sacrilege here. Uh, first of all, I want to make the sort of silhouette of the gun just look slightly different. I don't want to take it too far. These aren't chaos space marines. And in fact, in my lore, they don't even really know what chaos is beyond the most basic concept. So all I've done here is I'm shaving off the Aquila and then I'm going to use the mythical etched brass of a bygone era. I'm definitely sad to be using it as it disappears, but it's good to put it to good use. And to finish off the gun with the etched brass, I came in with a generic chaos sigil with a nice bit of what looks like etched graffiti on the bottom of it, as well as two numbers just to denote the gun's designation in the arm. Okay, as I move on to the traitor crew, I wanted to do something that we call hurry up and waiting with my poses. I, I think that in war, so often all of our pieces of equipment are posed in the midst of fighting, but I thought with an artillery crew, it would be cool to have the loader not actually actively loading the shell. They're just sort of standing there ready, waiting to be called upon to load a shell. So for this model, I did actually use the blooded kill team box to grab the torso, but then I used some of the arms from the Cadian box to find what I needed. For the head, I grabbed one of the Cadian heads that I liked with the inbuilt earmuffs. That made a lot of sense, but I made sure to carve away that pesky Aquila. And for the final model of the crew, I had this awesome Vox caster operator, I believe, from the Trader Command Sprue, but he was never going to get used as that. And I thought he made a really cool logistics commander for a Trader Artillery Battery. And to carry the narrative of the loader that's at rest, this commander is actually going to be walking up to the front of the trench. It's almost as if they're checking their fire, making sure their targets are destroyed. I don't imagine this crew was being close into the action. This is definitely a well behind the battle line artillery in place. So to build up this trench, I know a lot of trenches often get a lot of mud down in them and they will place wooden boards to ensure that they, you know, can have somewhat dry feet or stable surfaces. So I used popsicle sticks and carved into them with a knife to give that effect. Then I built up the front of the board with some cork board and then covered it all in a healthy supply of just a mud texture effect. Nice, yeah, I love just, even if it's unintentional, the sort of ramshackle where you throw all these popsicle sticks together sort of gives an intention of how quickly it's just thrown together to create this emplacement. I love it. So you're finishing up here and you're just finding the best way to place all your little infantrymen, all your crew. This is fantastic. This is like exactly what you want to see from this. It's basically a diorama that we've made despite being a completely usable game piece. You're just telling a little narrative within this space and I think that's the best part of this project. But I think we've seen enough of these traders for now. Murray, why don't you tell us all about your Steel Legion? Very well. Steel Legion has always held a special place in my heart ever since I saw their artwork in, I think, the second or third edition codex of Imperial Guard, back when uh, it was mandatory to take transports for every single unit, uh, even the heavy weapons teams. So I have quite a lot of APCs and Chimeras, which I am actually really quite proud of, even though it has not let me win many tournaments. Still points. Uh, my opponents were all very grateful though. However, I love the aesthetic, just all the tight-knit infantry fighting in the wastes, the deserts inside the factories, and just supported by endless amounts of APCs and heavy tanks that are just being produced even as they fight. I have collected these for, I don't want to think about how long, but I really enjoy the aesthetic. I've tried to match the color scheme as close to the artwork as close as possible. And this has been a really good passion for me over all these years. I keep collecting tanks and I even have another Bane Blade to build and convert into a Storm Blade was my plan. You may have seen it pop up in my Stomper video. But now I get to add a bit more infantry to it, made out of plastic as opposed to the old pewter, which is quite heavy and very expensive to get a hold of. So time to see if I can recreate some of these in plastic. Now for Dave's part of the project, he had all these extra bits that he could just swap out. I don't really have that. I actually have a couple of spare Steel Legion models that aren't built or painted and I have cut off like heads and things in the past, but it is a right pain to do that to solid pewter miniatures. So I'm going to try and use as much of the Cadian parts as possible. I also have access to one of the uh, Krieg kill teams, but I'm going to use the novelty of the Cadians as well and just try and use as much of these as possible. Now, 
there's still going to be a little bit of green stuff going on, namely the masks, but I think that's going to be fairly easy as the gas masks are sort of just a lump. So that's not going to be too bad. The actual cable to the gas mask to the rebreather located on the chest might be a bit more difficult, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The next biggest difference is, of course, that the Steel Legion aren't actually equipped in carapace armor. So I'm going to have to cut off all this lovely armor and just make a nice boggy mess that I can sort of touch up a bit with green stuff and turn into those nice uniforms. Now I decided to build the loader and the commander at more or less the same time, so we're going to bounce between them a bit. Mainly because it was easy to do that as the gunner himself was, you know, glued to the gun. Now, for the loader, I wanted someone in action hefting the piece, basically using one of the existing poses. I really liked it. They're wearing big heavy gloves, which is another thing that the Steel Agent have, just these really oversized gloves, which is more a nature of their old models, but I really like it, so I'm going to try and keep it a bit. This is from the Death Corps Krieg kit. I'm going to use one of their heads because I think that their helmet will be perfect for the commander. And with just a few additions and removals, it's going to fit in perfectly. All right, Mari, uh, this is something I had avoided. Green stuff, <laughs> take it from here. The biggest parts I'm going to be doing with green stuff are the gas masks, tightening up the areas around the chest just to make it look a bit nicer. And of course, the bottoms of the trench coats around their legs. Commander has a longer trench coat, almost down to his ankles, so I'm actually going to buff out his leg area in between his legs so I have something to push against a little bit. So the green stuff I put on doesn't just sort of get pushed in between his legs, I want it to sort of flow out a little bit. Now Dave, something that I've always loved about the lore of Steel Legion is that the orcs break into their huge hive cities and they're basically fighting inside the compounds and the factories. The factories that are famous for just producing hundreds and millions of chimera tanks. And so they're fighting around all these production assembly lines while they're still operating. So they're literally fighting around the factories where these tanks are still being built. So I wanted to replicate this. I will quickly interrupt this video to say that these videos are all brought to you thanks to the support of our amazing patrons. And every month we do a really cool mini review where we go through and check out the minis of our patrons, put our video on our Patreon, as well as regular updates, behind the scenes, bloopers, all that kind of nonsense. So if you'd love to support the channel, consider signing up to our Patreon. Links are in the description. Thanks everyone. Come hang out. I thought you were gonna take my shirt off then. I got momentarily very confused. Now, Mari, you brought in a beautiful paint guide that you'd kept for years with all your instructions on it, right? I sure did. It was hastily scribbled and is very many years old now. Ah, yes. Yeah. See, I never do anything that organized and I vaguely tried to recall how I painted these models. So in hindsight, looking back at this, I actually used the wrong gray for my pants. I used my old gray rather than new one. So um, yeah. I should have painted these a shade lighter, but whatever. It still looks cool. And uh, there's no consistency in a trader's military uniform. Yeah, I think you get away with it. They found vaguely gray coveralls and that's, <laughs> that was their uniform. Now, something I find with Warhammer models is there's a tendency to paint all the details, all the little gubbins, the cogs, the gears, everything in a different way. And I have done this historically, especially with Chaos Space Marines. But I decided with my Trader Guard, I wanted them to feel a little bit more grounded. And you can see that in my paint scheme, it's a little bit more realistic and muted but I'm also doing that with the gun. Most military equipment is just painted a single color, especially military equipment from World War II, which these designs are aping off. So for the gun, I went with a gray just all over it. I went with the same gray, the darker gray of my armor for the whole gun, which I can then embellish with some rust and also the etched brass areas. There weren't too many parts on these models which were unique from other traders in my force. If you'd like to check out a more detailed description of how I paint these traders, uh, go check out my kill team video up there in the cards. However, the base was a new element. There is a really nice large area with these new field guns. Yeah, they're a lot larger than usual. Usually the model just sort of spills over the base. I'm thinking of the old crisis suits in particular. Everything just sort of overhangs and you have to struggle to find anything nice to do on the base. But these are just made for diaramas. 
Yeah, it really feels like I moved towards telling a story on the model, and I actually really love it for these artillery. Now for the color schemes, one of the tertiary colors for my guard is a dark brown. So I went for a lighter brown for the timber. And then one interesting thing I did is when I got to the wash stage, I actually used some Coelia green shade washes in patches before going over most of it in Agrax Earthshade. This gives some natural areas where the wood looks to be rotting or a little bit discolored. Yeah, yeah, just giving a bit of natural variation. I like it. Now, the traitor world that my homebrew force is inspired by lives on a fairly barren hive world. That is, there are hives, but outside the hives, we have lots of this grey ash wastes sort of terrain with a smattering of brown soil mixed in between. Another fun little area of pop my newer trader guard have is a more obvious bit of connection to the Alpha Legion who've inspired their revolution. So a lot of my tertiary command colors, my little spot details are done in the same Alpha Legion teals as I use for my heresy force. It also makes just a lovely accent across all the browns and greys. And also, while I've leaned away from doing this on the actual infantry armor of my models, on larger equipment such as field guns, I've added a few little patches of rust in. I think these oranges and browns help to just blend this in with the rest of the army, and it's a real nice little pop of color. And the last touch all my forces get, once again, to bring that earthy tone through the whole model is burnt umber weathering pigment, especially focused towards the lower parts of the model. Yeah, I do love that despite the fact that you painted this entire model grey, you've managed to find so many ways to introduce colour. I, th I think you know, you've come a long way as a painter. Oh, thank you. And uh, this is what I would call a, this is, this is probably my only army that I genuinely call a tabletop standard without feeling like I'm lying. I, I think this is a pretty efficient paint scheme and I'm really happy with it. Hell yeah. All right, so with painting my Steel Legion, the first thing I wanna do is get a nice base coat down for the fatigues. I'm gonna use Avalon Sunset, my recipe that I've used for years, and I'm just gonna build that up. Thin coats, people. Now, one thing I like doing is adding a bit of color and flavor and texture into all my pieces since it's gonna be a lot of metal. So I'm actually gonna start with a brown. Then I'm going to basically overbrush metal over this and then follow up with Nuln Oil, which is going to add all my depth and flavor and texture. And it's going to look very nice very quickly. Now this is a nice example on how I paint all the helmets and carapace armor on my infantry. It's actually basically the same step as the metal. Poo brown slapped everywhere, sort of a bit dirty and gritty. And then instead of going for metal, I'm going to go in with a nice dark green, heavily dry brush this over and just get it really nicely gritty. Gets lots of lines in it, looks good. And then again, null oil over the top. It's almost like this is going to be a lot of null oil. And I'm just going to stipple in the sort of pattern that I like that Steel Legion uses for most of their tanks in the official art. It's just lines of sandy yellow and it's just gonna go diagonally across, nice and messy. And there is the famous null oil. Yeah. To give the fatigues a nice bit of hearty punch, I'm going to shade them using Fugan Orange. I'm gonna put it on fairly lightly since it's a pretty strong wash. So that's everything broadly done now. Now it's time to lavish all the details. Now what I'm actually using here is the Armageddon Dunes technical paint that Games Workshop makes. And I'm just going to absolutely slam this down and just then spread it around. Wow, I love what you've done here, Mari. In fact, I can't wait to see the reveals, but even just watching you place the models and find the places in this to create your scene is really cool. What I think is really cool is that this does feel like the perfect juxtaposition of the loyal crew loading their weapon and also my dirty trench-filled chaos crew. Yeah, I'm so happy we got to do this. They're gonna look fantastic next to each other. And as always, we'd love to give a big thank you to our patrons. Your support allows us to make two videos a week and continually try and do more and interesting things in the worlds of Warhammer. And if you sign up to our Patreon at any level, you get a shout out in one of our videos when you sign up, as well as joining the eternal scroll of patron champions over our reveals. Mine, mine, I have the high rate of fire. Mine just looks like a, looks like a gray blob.
on the camera. <laughs> like an actual field emplacement. <laughs> Mine just telegraphs where I am really. Like, I'm bright orange, I'm here. Looks great. Well, we're done. That was super, super fun. I hope you enjoyed the journey and a dive into some conversions, some cool little designs. Yeah, and what's capable with just a single box set of what is sort of just the original sort of mainstay of yeah. the Kill Guard, but let's spice it up. The vanilla boys. So if you like this video and want to see more, let us know. If you want Murray's Steel Legion, shout in the comments. If you want more of my Trader Guard journey, well, you're getting at least one more video. I'm already working on one, but but beyond that, uh, yeah, let us know. Let us know what you want to see because we love making cool Warhammer 40K stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our patrons. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe tickle the like button. I don't know. Ooh, tickle the like cheeky. button. Mm. See you next time. Caress that subscribe. Ha <laughs> ha!